Welcome everybody to Thursday's live show with the Junk Removal Authority. I am Lee Godbold. We come to you every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 noon. Uh, sorry for running a little late. I got something in my eye, so I'm sitting here struggling to see. So if you see me squinting, I had to take my left contact lens out, which is going to make this show interesting. I often say my vision is so bad, had I been born in the days before contacts and refrigerators, not refrigerators, contacts and glasses, I don't know if I'm hungry or what. Had I been born in the days before contacts and glasses, I would have been eaten, eaten by something before the age of 10. I would be no value at all to anybody because I'm pretty much blind. Anyway, um, appreciate everybody for watching yesterday's video. We got some great feedback uh, as well as Tuesday's video. Uh, two, a lot of the videos we're going to be putting out now are going to be talking about stuff that's just going on with all the different businesses, business interests that I'm involved in and that some of our partners are involved in. We're going to get some more people involved in this as well. So you guys start to really see um, challenges, things that are people are doing, failures, things that are going well with all different types of businesses. That's gonna be a slight shift we're gonna start doing over time, still with a very heavy focus on junk removal as well though. Today what I wanna talk about is MVP, not most valuable player, though what about those blues beating, the, uh, beating Boston last night? You pretty excited about that, Aaron? Absolutely. So, a great game. Yeah, it was a great game. Unexpected. I thought the Bruins were going to kind of pull that off, but uh, luckily the uh, St. Louis Blues uh, pulled it off. We got a lot of people from Boston here. I better be careful. I want to watch this channel. I better be careful talking about that. Um, but minimum viable product is what we're talking about here, guys. So when you guys, when you're looking to start up uh, a type of business, it's very common. You want to get it perfect. You want to get everything done. You want to, you've got this vision in your head on what you believe people are going to like about your company and, and you've got this vision in your head that you have to achieve a certain level of professionalism before you actually put out this new idea. And this is, not This is. Uh, let me give you an example. I've got, uh, we'll talk about some stuff we've got going on right, while we're talking about this as well as an example of somebody that I know, I would consider a friend. Uh, he was a personal, he did some personal training with me back when I used to work out, um, which I need to get back to doing, but I don't. Yeah, it's it's been moment. a little while. It's been a little while. It's been probably a year and a half ago uh, since I used to visit this guy. Um, he has been, he's a great personal trainer, he's been personal training for years, probably only 20 years. He had this, he's had this idea for about four or five years now that he wants to start up a fueling business. And what I mean by that is um, he's, he'll have a fueling truck that at the end of the end of the day, all these corporate vehicles, when they come back to their yard, he takes that truck and he's got, I don't know, a 500 gallon fuel tank or something on it. And he goes to their yard, their place of business, and he fuels everybody's vehicle up. So that way the next day, everything is completely full. He has traveled across the country looking at these different fuel rigs. Um, he is talked with people about getting financing. He has researched and researched and researched. He's talked with a few companies, but not a lot, but he's done a bunch of talking, a bunch of researching over five years. He's yet to have gotten in business and I'm already seeing the passion. That passion is starting to die in him because he, instead, all he's been doing is researching. He hasn't made actual steps to putting this in place. And this is a new enough industry that he needs to prove it out. It's not like junk removal, which is fairly proven. You can go to the proven business model in junk removal with great success. In his case, there are, some, there are some companies out there that are doing this with some success, but it's not as an established company. I would have done a little bit of research. I'd have figured out, all right, what's the minimum thing I need to get this thing started? All right, I need a, probably an F-250 pickup truck or a three quarter ton truck, doesn't have to be a diesel. Make the thing a gas to start with, it's cheaper to kind of get going. Make it look decent, but then strap, uh, strap a, get a fuel tank, strap a fuel tank on there, and get some sort of a uh, delivery system. And then start just knocking on these companies that have these fleet vehicles. I'd start with companies that have maids. I'd st you know, you're gonna start with some of your smaller businesses that might have 10, 15, 20, your junk doctors. You know, junk doctors, uh, th those vehicles, you know, that would be nice. Our guys don't have to fill stuff up at the end of the day. Five or six times we've had people put the wrong fuel type in these trucks. This would mostly eliminate that. It'd save on our labor cost. Um, there's a good chance we could hire that service and pay very little more, maybe the same amount, maybe less, than having our guys take, having our guys fill the stuff up. Because when the guys go to the gas station, they're going to go inside. They're going to use the bathroom. They're going to... Um, 
they're going to get something to eat. You know, they're going to, you know, they're going to order something. That's adding, when you're running 10, 15, 20 vehicles, that's adding a lot of time. So in my opinion, it's a good service depending on what he has to price it at. And also a lot of times people forget at the end of the day to actually fill the truck up. So you would eliminate that with this type of service. He never actually got started and that's where he, he missed the boat. He should have gotten a truck, he should have gotten the fuel, and he should have gotten out there and seen, can he sell this, can it be profitable, is this a service people actually need? Now, where it applies um, kind of with us right now, one of the reasons we're, we're doing this, this change in format is because we're at a stage in our business now where we're working with close to 50 junk removal companies throughout the uh, country. We've kind of proven out this JRA concept works. I was hoping to be with 150 companies at this point in, in, our, in our business, but you know, the, it, it hasn't scaled as quickly. Some say it's scaled quickly, but my, I was hoping to be at about 150, so I'm about a third of where we're at at the moment. Um, we're at a point now, especially on our Google Ads platform, we're ready to expand that out into other services. So what we're doing is a slight change in pace. So what we want to see is do we get more thumbs up from the content that we provide now? Do we get more subscribers from the content? And do we start having some other business types of businesses that begin watching this? That's kind of what we're tracking. When you guys want to try something new, don't feel like you have to go completely crazy on filling in this vision that you have of what this company is eventually going to look at look like. Uh, keep that vision in your head, but start with what's the minimum amount to start getting some customers to get some early adapters. If you've ever read The Lean Startup, great book. Um, they talk about early adapters. So get going, see results. You're gonna, your customers are going to tell you what people like, and then that's the direction you're going you're gonna to move in. So we're going to create a little page it's gonna be a professional looking page, but it's just gonna be about ads management for service businesses. It's gonna talk about some of our background. It's gonna to link to our YouTube show. I don't know what else is gonna be in there, but that's kind of what we're going after. Um, we're gonna find out if other service businesses start coming to us for that Google ad service. And then if they do, we're gonna ease into individual industries and figure out, all right, which industry can we really provide the most value in? Once we determine that, then we're gonna you know, race off in that direction. That's your approach when you guys are looking to make business changes or get into a new business that you haven't gotten in in the past. Um, I'll give you another thing I've got, we've got going on. So I'm a, I'm a minority partner in a air filter, premium air filter delivery service. So this right here, this is a home furnace uh, air filter and uh, it's got a bunch of dog hair on it, so it's doing its job. It's filtering out dog hair. And what we're doing with this particular filter is it's aimed at people with pet dander allergies at the moment. Uh, this filter right here uh, has much higher airflow than anything else you're gonna buy in a box store, in, in a store, and it's got multiple layers where most filters, all they do is they catch particles on the outside. So this with a higher airflow, still great filtering, uh, awesome filtering ability. Some of the stuff at Lowe's might have as good a filtering ability, but it's so restrictive, air never, the particles never reach it. This particular filter right here, um, it's, it, with the higher airflow, it can suck stuff from anywhere, you know, clean across the room, whereas a more restrictive filter is unable to do that. So this is about a $30 filter compared to, you know, you can buy filters for as cheap as a dollar or $2 at Lowe's or Home Depot, but they're really, all they're gonna filter out is like rocks and humongous debris like that. Everything else is just gonna recirculate. And then you've got some better filters for 10 or $15. This is almost twice that, but it's an actual 90 day air filter. So what we're doing, this, this type of filter has been distributed to industrial facilities, biomedical facilities, um, uh, power, nuclear power plants, hospitals. Uh, in the commercial setting, people that really, 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 really need great filtration, now we're trying to figure out, all right, are there certain subsets of the population that are willing to pay $30 for an air filter to get that better air filtration. Now the neat thing with that particular filter, you're gonna see 25% less, uh, your air conditioning and heating unit will run about 25% less because it's so much less restrictive, which is gonna lower, generally uh, your heating and air bills, your typical household heating and uh, your typical household utility is gonna be about 60 to 70% of your overall power bill. So that right there, that filter right there would lower your power bill by about 10%. So overall, what's occurring with that is uh, you're gonna get about a 10% power bill savings. So over the course of three months, we anticipate, you know, that filter is generally going to pay for itself. Even though it's $30, you'll save more than that. Then you add in reduced maintenance bills and you really see some serious savings. 
reason I bring the, the filter stuff into it is that's something that I'm working on at the moment uh, with my partner in that business. Um, it's premium pet dander, or excuse me, petdanderairfilter.com is the website. But that's, it's a, it's, I built that site on my own. We didn't use any of our developers here. It is truly a minimum viable product. And it's so much so we're sending traffic to it. Nobody's bought a filter yet off that site. We've been running it about a week. Uh, we're getting about 10 visitors a day. We're maxing out our Google Ads budget, getting about 10 visitors a day. What we're doing is we're learning data. Like we can actually pull it up right now. Let's go to mouseflow.com. This is a really cool tool that we use on different websites. This actually tracks um, cut movements when people go on a website. Like for example, if I'm moving my cursor around up here, I don't know if you guys can see that, but mouse flow is actually gonna track all of these movements. So Lee at petdanderairfilter.com. Let's log in and kind of see some of these test results that we're having on this particular project. And we're going to make this very quick. I don't want to go into too much detail on this. But if you go, this is where, if I can actually see, it would be actually a lot of help. All recordings. All right, so here's one right here from Titusville, Florida from five minutes ago. And you can log in. This individual spent about three minutes on the page. Is that right? No, spent about a minute on the page. And you can actually view this recording. And what we do with this, guys, is we learn, okay, where are we losing people? So we're going to see them probably move around a little bit on this page. And we're going to determine, all right, where are we losing them? This page doesn't look all that professional. We knew going into it, it wouldn't. So what, we, what we're believing is we need a bit more professional looking page for people to feel like they can actually trust the data we're giving them. As you can notice, these guys aren't even watching the uh, video here. They're just scrolling down. They're not reading the text. You know, we know this isn't a very an engaged person. We'd also go back and see, all right, what was the search term they used uh, when they looked at this particular page? One of the issues you'll find if it gets down, one, the way this ClickFunnels page is set up, again, I built this. I'm not a website builder. I built this. I mean, our company does it, but we've got people we pay to do it. I did this on my own. Um, the form at the bottom of this page asks, actually asks for ship billing and shipping information before it uh, before they, they look at prices and their different filter sizes. So that's that's gotta be a big no-no. And I don't know why I didn't realize that until we after we'd gotten the page up. But where I'm going with this is we could have built out, we could have spent $10,000 on providing a page for this without proving there's actually enough demand for premium pet dander filtering home furnace filters. Uh, you need to determine if there's actually demand in your service or your product before you kind of move into it. Aaron, we got any questions whatsoever? Guys, always hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up, thumbs down. Any questions you have at all on anything, feel free to post it in our, in our comments section as well. So, um, search engine optimization. A lot of you guys uh, in the, on the junk removal world, all businesses should be really concerned with uh, SEO. Um, search engine optimization is always about experiments. Companies and individuals that have been doing stuff for an extremely long time are going to be better suited than uh, an individual that's brand new to SEO at getting stuff done in a short period of time. But even, even individuals and companies that are extremely well versed in search engine optimization, you should always be experimenting. Now, this is somewhat similar to that minimum viable product like I was talking about in a way, but uh, in the fact that you're gathering data. That mouse flow is data I just showed you. Google Analytics is data. All that should be looked at and it should be thought of analytically over a period of time. Too many people want to judge an hour or a day or two days on results. You need a week or two to truly understand the results or maybe a month or two or a quarter or two to truly understand the results of your experiment because you have to have enough data in to get the correct data out which is going to allow you to interpret the information that you're receiving. So on SEO, let me tell you some of the experiments we, we run for SEO, both on our, our national JRA page that we're starting to expand out to other markets, um, as well as uh, for individual customers. So we, we run experiments all right, in certain markets, is, a te is more text going to lead to better results? Oftentimes that's the case. A page with more text on it, we've seen from competitors as well as some of our experiments that a lot of times uh, more text leads to better SEO ranking. 
So, but what you, we've also seen as more text, and this is experiments throughout the, I mean, this is data you look up on Google, oftentimes a larger page leads to lower conversions. So how can we get more traffic by increasing the amount of text while still uh, maintaining conversions? Uh, a good amount of conversion. So what we're experimenting with now are page changes. So anybody that has does a website through JRA, some of you guys are going to be seeing experiments go on where we're actually going to be including more text towards the bottom of the page. We're going to kind of we're going to try and make this page a design where customers aren't going to bounce off. So we're going to include more text towards the bottom to help out on SEO. But uh, we also want to design the page in such a way that people don't feel like they have to scroll all the way to the bottom and we drop them off and lose conversions. Guys, it's a test. It's an ongoing test. All of this is. If anybody tells you they've got it all completely figured out, they, in that very moment, maybe they do, two months down the line, three months, six months, a year down the line, they will be falling behind because they're not experimenting and testing. Every single part of your business, you should be evaluating at different points of the year. So you're not going to be able to, able to focus on in focus completely on every single part of your business, but you need to be focusing 20% of your attention on, uh, you know, uh, different parts of your business, and then focus about 80% in on one part that you think is your top priority at that given moment. Improve it, experiment with it, test it, get data. Always be able to get data, and if you can get that data and it's working well, excellent then that's the direction you want to go. If you make a change and it doesn't do well on this SEO stuff, if we make a change and it improves SEO but the conversions go down, you know, ultimately it's about conversions because, you know, that's the reason you SEO is you want to you want to sell. You know, you want to you want people to hire your service or buy your product. Um, if we did the changes and it resulted in better conversions but lower SEO, all right, we gotta evaluate here is the number of conversions gone up enough to allow for a lower SEO. So uh, that's just kind of kind of a constant experiment you're going to be going on. Uh, on average job, if you guys in, your, in the junk removal business, you're trying to get your average job up, which is the mo one of the most critical figures. Average job and customer acquisition costs are the two numbers you need to know inside and out, and you need to be constantly working to improve that average job. Um, you get that average job up, but all of a sudden your bookings start to go down, or your customer satisfaction goes down, you need to be testing it. That might be, maybe you're a little too high on your prices. I doubt it. Everybody that watches this is pretty much too low. Um, and then the other end of this thing, and this is something we haven't done as good of a job with in JRA in the past, we know the work we're putting into this stuff. We see the results. We know the time that's put into this, and it's tremendous. You know, the way we approach SEO is, all right, let's get all these companies ranking really, 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 really well. And once we have a portfolio, which we've got some companies ranking very well now uh, in different markets, in Denver and Huntington Beach, then you know our North Carolina junk doctors market ranks really well. We've got up in New York, we've got a customer ranking extremely well. So the, uh, yeah, we work with 50 cu customers total and about, about eight of us, about eight companies use us for SEO. So we're seeing great results um, from about, from pretty much most of all of the clients that have been with us for at least four, five, six months. Now it's up to us to show them those great results and to show others those great results. Because here's something to always remember. You've heard the saying, it's not what you know, but it's who you, it's not uh, what you know, it's who you know. There's also another saying in business I want you guys to remember, and it's not what you do, it's what customers see you do. So in the case of SEO, we have to have reports, and we've gotta have, you know, I tell our, our, our you know, we've, we've gone to this thing over the last few weeks, where I've told people, as you guys complete stuff on SEO, send customers messages, say, hey, check this out, and make it be something that they can see. You know, if we create links, send them those links, those backlinks, so they can actually visit those pages where those links are coming from. Um, and, you know, we added, uh, there, we're testing out a new review tool, because review tools have been shown to improve SEO. So let's, here, here's a customer of ours uh, in New York. This is Junk Pros in New York. If you scroll down and look at this page, so this is a new review tool we just installed. It looks fantastic. It all we're hoping it, it helps increase conversions too. Um, the other end of this is having reviews on your page has been proven to increase your Google search ranking if the reviews are actually hosted on the page and they're not kept off on like some JavaScript. So uh, you have to use the correct review tool. We're monitoring, this is a new tool we're using, we're gonna monitor the results. Do we see one, an uptick in SEO? Do we see two, an uptick in conversions? 
Mouse flow, this would be a good idea to put mouse flow on this page, but if you do it, it needs to be for just a short period of time. The one issue with mouse flow, that's that mouse tracking software I just showed, is it does slow down your site speed. And that's important for SEO. Site speed is one of the most important things. The, how quick your page loads is one of the most important things. If you add something like this, it is going to slow down site speed a little. What we're hoping is that having the review on the page is uh, this type of tool is actually going to increase. The, you know, it's going to outweigh the the negative to a slightly slower loading page. Uh, mouse flow she needs to be used for a short period of time while you run an experiment, and then you get rid of it because it is going to hurt your uh, your SEO rankings for sure. Great thing to do on a brand new page. Got any questions? Yeah, we got one from Good Karma uh, on YouTube. AdWords question. Do the companies at the top of the search stay there or do companies cycle through? So AdWords is a breathing. The reason you need an AdWords management company is stuff is always changing. So um, Good Karma, you're an AdWords customer of ours. And I don't know, I haven't, I haven't gotten a brief on your, uh, your report on, on your stats and all this week from Fully or Shane. But I know they are doing some experiment, experimenting in different areas of the country, as they always do, on ad position. So you've been with us, uh, I don't know, several weeks now. And they're, they're going to start you, generally what they do is they'll start you out at third, maybe first in a, in a lower competitive market. If you come in where it's, the bids are cheaper than what we expect and you wind up first, they'll probably let you roll in first. But then what they'll do is they'll let you slip down to second or third. And they put on conversion tracking so we can actually see the phone calls you get and we're able to monitor the phone calls you get and it's possible that in second or third you potentially actually get more phone calls and conversions you might get less conversions but you might get more book jobs as also though because in some areas of the country we've seen this to be the case in in, um, in parts of florida in parts of florida you don't want to be number one because people go on the page it's an older population and old people that are older tend to research more um, and they spend more, it takes them more time to research. They also have more time, so they, you know, they spend it researching junk removal. So what we found is, is oftentimes um, in certain areas of the country, people want to visit two or three sites before they make a phone call. So you have to determine through experimenting and testing and, con che and checking conversions which one of those positions in your particular area of the country is going to lead to the most phone calls. Uh, you know, People are going to realize at some point, junk removal companies, I'm in the junk removal business, We've, I've always struggled with answering the question, what does junk doctors do significantly different than anybody else? We remove junk guys. I mean, yeah, we do, do, do a great job. We got great reviews. We answer that phone really well. We book jobs at a high rate. That's more along the lines of what JRA does. You know, what here at JRA we do better than junk doctors. But we do, you know, we show up on time. Uh, we are dressed in uniform, but guys, we got competitors with great reviews. Guys, we got competitors that price about the same. We got competitors, you know, there's nine companies that dress in uniform. Now, I think we might be on time more often than a lot of other companies, but that's not something that really, really sets us apart. So what a lot of customers are going to realize is most drug removal companies are about the same. I'm going to hire based on how much I like this, in, you, know, you know, if I feel like this company when I pick up the phone, do they sound helpful on the phone? Do they sound friendly on the phone? Do they give me the information I need? Does their website give me the information I need in the order I need it? Then great. But if you're that first person, you, your site can nail all that, but they're still, they're saying, all right, I'm gonna research at least three different companies. So even if your site's first and it's great, they might get to the third site. Maybe the third site's a little bit worse than the first, but there's a chance they've forgotten about the first. They call the third, the third does a great job on the phone, nails it, books it, gets money from it. The nice thing is the lower your position, actually the less you pay. To answer your question, I made that a very long answer, but uh, at, you know, competitors can change their bids. Uh, that could, that, uh, when, if competitors up their bids, that could lower your ranking. If, if their competitors increase their quality score, and yours, you know, let's say your quality score is an eight out of 10, theirs is a 10 out of 10, that's gonna increase their ranking. So it takes constant monitoring and moving around to determine one, what position you need to be in. Once you determine that position, you have to figure out, all right, how for the least amount of money possible do I get that position and keep that position because there could be another competitor going after that same spot. So, we um, have made mistakes. All right, so JRA, this Junk Removal Authority site, this is an example of a site, I don't know, we spent $15,000 or something on this, on this website. 
screen went off. Um, 15,000 or so on this website. And it's very helpful, but a question we often get is what do you guys actually do? If you search for junk removal franchise, most places throughout the country, this site is gonna appear anywhere from third to seventh. And the nice thing with the keyword junk removal franchise, somebody that's interested in getting a business and doing a franchise is they're gonna go through a lot of different Google results. So what we found, people on our YouTube channel, even on the YouTube channel, it's not like we mention products all the time, but people tend to have a better idea, a better idea of what we do. People that find us from Google, they get to this webpage and they're like, what the hell do you do? Are you just providing a bunch of information for the hell of it? Or are you actually trying to sell a service? So up here we've got where it says services, but we found that people just, there's so much information on here, they don't actually know where to go. This would have been better off for us to have done a minimal viable product instead of going out and spending $15,000 on putting this site together. What should have been done is um, we should have put out maybe a, a $5,000 site with just a few services on there and figured out what people paid attention to, what they liked the best. We still want to get the information, don't get me wrong. All these great articles on this website, we still won't. The reason we do this is that when you give away free information, it helps people trust you. It helps people get to know you and understand, hey, you're providing a lot of value. When you provide value to people, they generally want to reciprocate by giving back, by hiring your services. You know, that's one of the reasons we do this. We want to help people out, but we also know by giving out content, free content, oftentimes people want to come back and actually hire your service because they, they look at you as a friend instead of just a company that's just trying to sell them some individual service. There's tons of companies out there trying to sell services. There's not a ton to give out a lot of great content. This site needs a redesign, but we don't want to spend the money on it. So what's happened is we spent so much money on this particular site. We're going, through, we're doing what well, we, we are doing, like I talked about, where we're doing a minimum viable product. It's on a different website though. We're going to determine what works on that. And then you're going to start seeing shift and shifts and changes in the JRA site a little at a time. That way we test and kind of see what works. Now, case of the JRA business package, you know, you're sitting there thinking you want to get in business. That's proven itself. The case, if you want to go out and you want to buy a, buy an ARS rescue router or you want to buy into any of these franchises out there or Chick-fil-A or whatever, that's a proven model. Go all the way in. They've done the experimentation for you. If you're trying a newer industry, something new, something that's never been done before, that's when you need an MVP, a minimum viable product to determine if it's actually worth pursuing. I almost guarantee my initial vision on JRA is not what JRA is now. So I almost guarantee that when you, your initial vision and your confidence is going to work out, over time you're going to find different avenues you need to go and you need to be willing to make those changes. If you spend $20,000 or $100,000 or a million dollars, the more money you spend, the less likely you are to want to change it because you're like, I spent that money, I want to make it work. Always keep that in mind. The more money you spend, the more stubborn you're going to be at changing. Also, on the flip side of that, that might not be a bad thing where you're going into junk removal business, which has been proven to work, spend more money because you're less likely to give up. So there's a couple different ways you can kind of take that. Um, as we make these shifts on our YouTube channel, we're getting ready to wrap here also, guys. Like Before we get to that, uh, truck bodies. We are going into the business of building truck bodies. I do want, we have made some mistakes on this particular. We're about a month behind, probably a month behind, maybe six weeks behind of where I wanted to be. And this goes along the lines of, and I've said this in the past, you never want to rely on one of anything. Well, big dummy here, let me bang my head on the desk right here. Uh, big dummy here uh, uh, did not follow his own advice. And we wanted to try something unique where we actually used, um, we have a, uh, there's some companies around here, there's companies kind of everywhere that, that have CNC equipment and machinery and they have warehouses. And we actually wanted to, to do something a little different where we actually got these companies with CNC machines to build the individual panels for these bodies. And this company was supposed to have gotten me pricing information and drawings and all that stuff about a month ago. Um, I also turned over a little bit too much to him. I wanted him to actually gather all the prices for the individual components of the bodies themselves. So your, your lift motors, your, your, your hydraulic tank, your pumps, um, the cylinders, you know, uh, all the, the, the latches for the toolbox, the steps, uh, the switches for the tarp and, and the dump. You know, I, I, I was going to have him gather all that information. I gave him too much to do and I gave one person too much to do. Instead, we have no drawings, we've got no pricing, we've got nothing. 
So I'm a month behind schedule. And now it's like, all right, do I wait on this guy at this moment or do we go ahead and get out and start getting bids from other companies? Or do we go with an MVP, minimum viable product, which is let's build the daggone bodies like everybody else has in the past. Let's figure out at one, if we, if we can sell these at enough rate for us to continue investing more into it. And um, then at that point, let's start experimenting. Let's figure out, all right, these changes we wanna do, the people in the marketplace, act, are they willing to pay for it? Maybe it's cheaper. The route we were going, we were hoping it was going to make it cheaper. So you figure out, okay, the main thing, though, with truck bodies, we need to be able to deliver them fast. We know that. That's the issue we're addressing. That's the reason we're getting in this business is we see these niche businesses that are they're slow to respond. What we need to have done is submitted that bid to three different companies, and then we need to have done the legwork for the individual parts. And then that way we've got th uh, three companies that are going out there and getting us drawings and, and stuff all at the same time. Or if somebody, this one company doesn't get it done, we've got two to judge off of, and then we know we probably don't want to work with this one company. Always, always, always avoid that one. I know that. I made that mistake. It did come from a referral from somebody that I liked, so that's the reason I written that route. I still wouldn't have done it. Even if somebody refers you to an, a company or an individual, still do your own research and still do your estimates and all in most cases. Uh, don't put all your eggs in that one basket from that one referral because if it doesn't work out, then you're six weeks behind schedule like we are on the truck body end of things. Um, so I got to figure out what we're going to do there. This newer YouTube format, guys, we are not abandoning junk removal. I'm talking about junk removal now. We're going to still be talking about junk, continue talking about junk removal. But those of you watching this know that, that, that I'm, I'm a business guy. I'm not, I know junk removal inside and out, but I haven't been on, I have not been on a junk removal job in probably three years other than take pictures or if it's a friend of mine that's doing the job or check in on a job. It's been two years since I've checked on a job. So it's been three years since I've, I've actually done a job. So, you know, there's other YouTube channels out there if that's what you guys uh, get satisfaction out of. What I want to do is I want to bring you all the stuff that's going on in my business and other people's businesses. So our ideas is to actually create a pool of several businesses in different startup phases. So right now I've got air filters, I've got truck bodies, I've got JRA, and we've got junk doctors, which is much more mature. So I myself, and then my wife has do, got an athletic facility we're opening up. So I myself am involved in five different businesses that we're going to be able to talk about. Um, I, I, we've got uh, my partner in JRA, Brett. Brett's going to start putting out stuff. Uh, he's got a software business, and he's also obviously trying to get JRA going too. So he's going to offer some information on the JRA end of things and what we're doing, and he's going to offer information on the software development end of, end of things. Um, and we've got, I've got some, another friend that's in the startup. Uh, I've got a friend of a friend that was a Thunderbird, U.S. Uh, Air Force Thunderbird pilot. I want to talk to him. He might even be getting on Shark Tank too soon. I want to see if he wants to come on this channel. We want to find five or six different businesses, talk about, I want to go over P&L statements. You know, I want to give information to people on where these businesses truly stand. You get on YouTube and you see all this stuff and you have no idea where people actually stand. You know what people are telling you? You feel like you can trust them. You know, I got guys I watch all the time I feel like I can trust, but it'd be great if they actually showed numbers. I don't know of anybody that's ever done that before. We're going to do it. We're going to give you the strategies we're going to do. And I want to get other companies involved in doing it too. I want to build up this YouTube channel. We'd like to be at 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I hope we can blow that out of the water. Um, our goal by doing this, again, is because we're trying to expand into other services. By doing so, we've got to provide tons of value to a lot of different people. Provide a bunch of value to a bunch of people, your business is going to be successful. Get known, get a bunch of people that know you, your business is going to be successful. That's our strategy on trying to build up this channel beyond junk removal. Junk removal, you might be able to get 5,000 subscribers maybe. Uh, this channel right here, I'm hoping you know three years from now is in a million subscribers. We think we can do that, Aaron? Let's do it. Do a million? So uh, we got to do something crazy to make that happen. And that's why we're going to start being completely transparent and trying to bring in other types of companies throughout the country to do it as well. Um, have we got any questions before we wrap, Mr. A. Aaron? I don't see any. Awesome, guys. Well, hey, check us out every Tuesday and Thursday at uh, 12 noon Eastern for our live show. And you'll find a lot of the videos that I'm going to start to put out now, which is this just phone in front of me right here. Um, it's going to be a lot of the same content we cover in the live show. The live show is your opportunity to interact and, and post messages and questions and, and offer you some advice if you've got advice and all that kind of stuff. But hey, let me tell you something. We're watching the data. If you guys like these live shows, we need some interaction because if the data shows people don't like them, 
and we get better results from me just talking in front of a camera and I don't have to tie up an hour of Aaron's time, then I'm just gonna start talking in front of a camera or we're gonna ditch the live show. So give us a thumbs up, gotta interact with it, subscribe to our channel, check us out on Facebook if you guys like this and want us to continue doing it. Um, if you like me just in front of this camera, I'm gonna keep doing that anyway. But uh, you know, we need to know this investment's paying off too. That's the type of experiment you should be doing in your business. Again, every Tuesday and Thursday, 12 noon,